Let's look at some related rate problems. I'll try to do kind of the five most popular examples. So let's start out with just a cylinder. And let's go ahead and dump some water in it, okay? Let's go ahead and dump, oh, I don't know, three cubic feet. And we'll go per second. Okay, so we're taking a hose and we're dumping water into the cylinder, okay? So the first thing, let's establish the fact that the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h, okay? And then what is this? Well, this three cubic feet per second, that's the rate at which the volume is changing. That's dv dt. Some people might even call it just v prime, okay? So that's what that cubic feet per second means. It means the rate at which this water is changing. Okay, and what we wanna do is we wanna find dh dt. dh dt is the time derivative of h, but it's really just the rate at which h is changing with respect to time, and it's gonna be in feet per second, okay? And if you look here, we have a relationship between volume, r, and h, and you kinda of have to imagine, so we have some water in here, and as we dump more in, this water level is gonna rise. And one of the things you wanna keep track of, in this particular case, r is a constant and we'll just say it's four, okay? The fact that it's not a function of time, meaning it's not changing, um, dr dt would be zero, is an important thing to kind of keep track of here. So for us, we're gonna take this relationship between volume and r and h, and we're gonna take a time derivative, and we're gonna treat r as some constant. So in this case, pi r squared is just the coefficient. So when we take the time derivative, we get dv dt equals pi r squared times dh dt. And at this point, we're just kind of plugging in numbers. We're done. What we've done, again, this whole section is called related rates. We're looking at how the rates of all of these things are related. And in this case, this one's a little easier because dr dt is equal to zero. So we know that this is three pi, and the radius is four, so that's four squared times some dh dt. And when we make this, you're gonna end up solving for dh, and you're gonna get dh dt is equal to 0 0.0596, and again, that would be in feet per second. Okay, so kind of our first easy example of how the rate at which the volume is changing is related to the rate at which the height is changing. All right, let's do a Pythagorean theorem one. So you're gonna do, like in gym class, um, you're gonna do this line tag, and you are chasing your friend. You are gonna be sitting here, and your friend is up here, and you're gonna run this way along the line, and he's gonna run that way away from you at the line, okay? Let's say at the moment we're interested in Let's say x, we'll call that x, and we'll call that y. x, in the moment we're interested in, is 40. We'll go 40 feet, because this is a really big gym. And then y, we'll say, is 30 feet. Those things are not constant, right? You are changing x and you are changing y. x is the distance you are from the vertical line, and y is the distance your friend is above that horizontal. Okay, let's say you can run at six meters per second. Here's the thing you really wanna make sure of. Dx dt is gonna be a negative six feet per second. The question is, why is it negative? Well, what is dx dt? Dx dt is the rate at which you change x as a function of time. What's happening to x? x is the distance between you and this point here. Well, as you run this way, x is getting smaller. Well, if x is getting smaller, that's the definition of a negative rate of change. So dx dt has to be negative. And let's say your friend who's running that way, he can run at two meters per second. And that's gonna be a positive because what's, oh, two feet per second, sorry. That's a positive number because he is increasing y, right? The dy dt is a positive, meaning every second he's going two feet further. Okay, so in time, he's going this way and you are going this way. And the question is, what is 
dl of t. So let's define l as the distance between your friend and you. That's the straight line distance. And the whole point of the problem is to find dl of dt. And again, it'll be in feet per second as well. It's the rate at which this distance is changing at this particular moment. That's, this is not going to be a constant rate. You know, as x and y change, so will dl dt. Okay, because l is changing as well. Okay, so let's find this. So we need a relationship between x, y, and l. Okay, let's, that's pretty easy. We know the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals l squared. And as long as that's a true relationship between x, y, and l, and all of these are functions of time, then again, we can take a time derivative. So we can get 2x dx dt plus 2y times dy dt equals 2l times dl dt. And again, you might have textbooks or even other notes that say 2x x prime plus 2y y prime equals 2l l prime. And these primes represent time derivatives. I just want to make sure you don't get prime. Like sometimes y prime is dy dx and sometimes y prime is dy dt. So you just have to make sure in this particular case or in related rates, we're almost always looking at time derivatives. Okay, so our whole goal is to solve for dl dt. We're looking to solve for this guy. And what we know is we know x, we know y, we know dx dt, we know dy dt, and actually indirectly we know l. Remember, if this is 40 and this is 30, if we know x and y, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find l. And I did pick nice numbers to make that 50 feet. And at this point, we know every single number. We can get rid of all these silly twos. That doesn't really do much. And so x is 40 times a negative 6 plus y is 30 times 2 equals l was 50 times what we're looking for. And I'm going to go back to dl dt. I do, I do think the blue notation is superior over the primes just because it really lets you know exactly what you're doing here. So this is negative 240 plus 60 equals 50 times dl dt. So this is Oh, what is that? Negative 180 divided by 5. Um, and what do we get? What? Negative 3.6. So we have dl dt is negative 3.6 feet per second. Okay? Not too bad, right? We're looking at the rate at which that is changing. All right. Next one. Let's look at an angle one. So what we have here, let's say we have some hot air balloon. Okay? And you are standing here and you're on the ground. I know your eye isn't technically on the ground, but let's pretend we're looking at an eye level view here. And we're going to call this X. And let's go ahead and call this H. This straight line distance, we'll go ahead and label this as a theta. And the story is, is that a hot air balloon is going straight up. Okay. And let's say it's going up at 10 meters per second. And x is 80 meters, and h is 60 meters. Okay. Now, obviously, h is changing as this balloon goes up and up and up. H is changing. X is not going to be changing, and actually, the dotted line is going to be changing, and theta is going to be changing. Right? If we think about one second later, well, it was at 60 meters. Well, now it's going to be up here at 70 meters. The balloon is one second later, and then the angle is. More like that and and this distance is changing so we have mul multiple things that are all related again this is all about looking at the relation between all these rates okay so the goal here is we want to find d theta dt we want to find how fast our angle is changing again that's going to be in radians per second and again we're specifically looking at that moment in time all right again if we want a relationship between d theta dt and dh dt, well, then we got to get a relationship between theta and h. I'm going to use tangent. Tangent of theta is h over x. And I want to remind you guys that this, in this particular example, is a constant. x is not changing. The balloon is going straight up. So there's no change in x. So when I take the derivative here, the left side, I'm going to take the derivative of tangent. I get secant squared theta times d theta dt. And the derivative over here, if x is a constant, then the derivative is just dh dt over x, right? That x just chills out like a, like a coefficient, okay? 
secant. Hmm, what is secant? Well, secant is uh, 1 over cosine. So the secant squared is like dividing this by cosine squared. Well, what's cosine? Well, we could find the angle, or we could just do this in the abstract. If this is 60, 80, then we know that that's 100 meters. And if that's 100 meters, then cosine is just, cosine of theta is just adjacent over hypotenuse. So 80 over 100 is just 4 fifths. So this is just d theta dt over cosine squared, but cosine was 4 fifths. So that's just 4 fifths squared equals dh dt, which was 10 over 60. Oh, my bad, not 60, 80, right, x over 80. And again, when you solve for this, this is going to be d theta dt equals, this is just 1 eighth, and this is 16 twenty fifths. We're going to multiply it over the other side. Uh, 16, 16 twenty fifths, is that what I said? Yeah, 16, 16 twenty fifths is in the denominator, so we're going to multiply by 16 twenty fifths. And all of a sudden, we have, what is this, 2? over 25, which is 0 0.08 radians per second. And again, that's d theta dt, and some people might even call it theta prime. And again, we related the rate at which the angle was changing to the rate at which the height was changing. Okay? All right, let's do two more examples. The, the last two examples I want to look at, one is a shadow problem, which seems to be a popular one. So here's some ground. Here's a lamppost. So there's a light up here. And you're standing, you're standing like this. So this is you. Uh, you. This is the light up here. Let's say you are height little h. The lamp post is big H. The distance you are from the wall, we'll call X, and the length of your shadow is L. Again, highlighting, this is the light and it's shining this way and it's forming this shadow on the ground. Okay, that's the length of the shadow. And we want to know how the length of the shadow is changing. That's DL dt. And how that compares to how fast you're walking, which would be X dt. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and walk this direction. So you're going to walk towards the lamp. And so you have to think about what dx dt is. Dx dt is going to be a negative. Let's go ahead and call dx dt negative three meters per second. Again, it's a negative rate because x is decreasing as a function of time. And at this point, again, it's like all these questions. If you want a relationship between dx dt and dl dt, the first thing you have to write is just the relationship between x and l. So I'm going to write you similar triangles and say H is to L as capital H is to the entire base, L plus X. I'm going to go ahead and do some algebra here because I don't want to take derivatives. Remember, my functions here are L and X. Those are the two things that are changing. Your height and the light's height aren't changing. So I'm just going to multiply, right? I'm going to cross multiply here. So H, L plus HX equals capital HL. And now I'm going to take a time derivative. Now I'm going to take a time derivative. Remember, h and h are just constants. So I get h l prime plus h x prime equals h l prime. And I do have to give you some more information, right? Um, let's say when we're interested in this situation, the light is 10 meters tall. You, oh, you're pretty tall. So you're 2 meters tall. And you are 8 meters from the wall. And again, I already gave you how fast you were walking. And so at this point, you have all this information. So this is 2L prime plus 2 times negative 3 equals 10L prime. Let's subtract that L prime over. So it's negative 6 equals 8L prime. And all of a sudden, we get negative 3 fourths is L prime. And again, that would be in meters per second. That's the rate at which the shadow is changing. And as you walk closer to the lamp, the shadow is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, as predicted, right? If you get really close to the light and you're standing like here, then the light would only form like this much of a shadow. So clearly, as you get closer and closer to the light, the shadow better be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and that's confirmed.
Okay, we'll do one more problem, and it's a cone problem, and the cone problem is just a little bit different. Um, and I'll try to use this space here. So a cone problem, similar to the first cylinder problem, except now, when we fill in here, let's go ahead and dump water in this thing. So dV dt is equal to two cubic inches per second. And when, well, let's give you some other values here. Let's say the cone has a radius of four and a height of 20, okay? And what we're interested in is dr dt and dh dt. dr dt and dh dt. We wanna know both of those things. And again, we're gonna figure out how those rates are related here. The cool thing you wanna notice about a cone is that when the water level goes up, so when the water level is like here, versus when the water level is here, both the height and the radius is changing. So both of these are gonna be functions of time, unlike the cylinder. Okay, so we can write a formula. The volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a substitution here. I could take a derivative and get some messy product rule, but I'd end up with two variables. Okay, I'm gonna relate R and H first. So let's look at this cone again. If we split the cone right down the middle, there's the height of the cone, there's out to the radius, and there's down. And if I said that the cone is a radius of four and a height of 20, if I take any cross section of this particular cone, that ratio has to be constant, meaning the height is always five times the radius. Or you could have said something like 20, um, is to 4 has uh, h is to r. However you want to get there, you end up with that relationship, which that allows me to make a substitution. Okay, when I make a substitution in here, let's get, um, let's get rid of r. So that means that r is h over 5. And I just picked that just because let's solve for dh dt first. Or maybe that's the only thing we'll even look at. So I'm not going to do any calculus. V equals one third pi, and instead of R, I'm gonna put H over five squared H. I'm still gonna do algebra, one third pi, and this is gonna be H squared, and then another H, that's H cubed over 25. So that's the volume is pi H cubed over 75. I haven't done any of calculus yet, but now I have a relationship between the volume and the height. I just got rid of R just because I didn't really know dr dt. And let's say I only want dh dt, but now I can take a time derivative. And that's really easy because I get dv dt and the derivative over here, bring the three down, is gonna make that a 25. Decrease the par by one times the derivative of the inside, right? And now I have enough information. I know dv dt is two pi 25 height. And again, that's something you're gonna to have to know. Let's say, again, we're, we're, we're gonna look for this guy, and we have to have a certain height we're looking at. So let's say we're looking for dHdt when h was five. You have to have that information. So that's five, and then times dH dt, and those actually just cancel out, and we get dHdt is equal to two over pi, um, which is pretty much point uh, 637, 637, and what did we say that was in? Inches per second. And just as a side note, if you know this is dh dt, let's come back over here. Well, then what's dr dt? Well, take a derivative here, and you're gonna get dh dt is equal to five times dr dt, so once you know dh dt, you can just divide by five and get dr dt, okay? And so we've actually found both of these things. Again, we related the rate of the rate of change of the volume in proportional to these two. We did make a substitution here. Uh, we could have done product rule. Product rule would have been a little messy, um, and we still would have had to do a substitution. If you do product rule here and don't make any substitution, then it'd be the first function, which would kind of be this guy, a one-third pi r squared times the derivative of the second dh dt plus, we kind of have to bend down here, the second function times the derivative of the first function, which would be two thirds 
pi r dr dt. And if you look here, we still have two variables and only one equation. So you're still going to have to make a substitution, except instead of making this substitution, you'd end up making this substitution, and it would still then give you dd dt in terms of just dr d, or either dr dt or dh dt. So look back at these five problems. Um, you have two geometry problems, one cylinder, one cone. The cone is a little bit harder. We had a Pythagorean problem where we were playing line tag. We have a uh, simple uh, right triangle problem with similar triangles. And then we had a trig problem where we were, you know, the balloon was going up and the, the angle was changing. But hopefully those help to get you started on looking at related rates.